Greetings in the name of Christ. I'm Walter Meyer III. We will be going over the Old Testament reading for Proper 27, 1 Kings chapter 17, verses 8 through 16. We'll spend most of our time dealing with the Hebrew text, translating, analyzing forms, because there are some interesting forms in this passage. At the end, there'll be just a few thoughts with regard to exegesis. So we proceed to the text and start with the first verse, 1 Kings chapter 17, verse 8. And was the word of Yahweh to him, that would be to Elijah, saying, we could smooth that out, the word of Yahweh came to him, saying, and then verse 9, arise, that's an imperative form, lake, also an imperative form from the verb halak, Kum, of course, is from the verb kum. Arise, go. That could be combined with the phrase, get going to Zarephath. So we have the name of the town with the locative hay at the end. To Zarephath, which is to Sidon, which belongs to Sidon. So this town is in Phoenicia, in the, in the vicinity of Sidon one of the major Phoenician cities, and dwell there. So the verb yashav, and that's a call perfect, second masculine singular, but it's a perfect, but it's also while consecutive, and therefore it has imperatival force after the preceding imperatives. Arise, go, dwell there. Behold, I have commanded, so from the verb tsawa, I have commanded there a woman, a widow to provide for you. Now at the end of verse 9 we have this long verbal form and so the preposition lamed is at the front, the suffix ka, second masculine singular, is at the end. The verbal root is the verb kul, so kaf wow lamed. And this is the pil pel, pil pel infinitive construct of that verbal root. And it has the sense, especially in this context, to provide for you. Verse 10, so he arose and he went, so again the verbs kum and halak, to Zarephath, and he came, the verb bo, to the entrance, or you could say to the gate of the city, and behold, there was a woman, a widow, and then we have this verbal form, mikosheshesheth. And this is from the verbal root kashash. So kof, sheen, sheen. BDB lists the verbal root as kashash. And this appears in the Hebrew Bible only as a poel. And this is a denominative. The verb is a denominative from the noun kash, which means stubble, or chaff. And thus the verb has the basic meaning gather stubble. However, here in this verse and also later in 1 Kings chapter 17 verse 12, when the verb is combined with the phrase pieces of wood, it has the meaning gather firewood. And so picking up again with verse 10, and behold there was a woman, a widow, gathering firewood, and she, he called to her, and he said, and here we have the verb lakach, an imperative form, feminine singular call, feminine singular, fetch. In this context, a good translation would be fetch, please, the particle of entreaty, na, for me, a little water in the vessel that I may drink. So the verb shatha. Preceding that, in the vessel, technically there is the definite article with the noun kali. And we can think of the definite article then as lending vividness to the narrative. That's why I'm translating it that way. Water in the vessel that I may drink. Verse 11. So she went to fetch and again, the verb there is lakach, and that would be a call infinitive construct. 
and he called to her. So Elijah called to her and he said. Now again, the verb lakak, and this is an imperative form. And the presence of the lamed here uh, in this call imperative of lakak is unusual because usually the imperative form for the verb lakak, call, is simply the kof and the chet. And so again, the presence of the lamed here, that first letter of the verbal root, is unusual. This occurs elsewhere only in Exodus 29, verse 1, Ezekiel 37, verse 16, and Proverbs 20, verse 16. But in those verses, the form is actually a call imperative masculine singular. Here, is, here in our verse 11, it is a call imperative feminine singular. But anyway, the meaning is clear, and he said, uh, fetch please for me path lechem, a morsel of bread in your hand. So the bait, preposition, cas suffix, and then the noun yad, hand. Verse 12, and she said, as Yahweh your God lives. And so that is like an oath formula, chai, Yahweh, and then Elohim. Here's with the suffix Eloheka as Yahweh your God lives. Now literally, if there is to me, and then we have the word ma'og, which means baked bread. That is a typical abbreviated oath formula in Hebrew. You know, if there is, the sense is actually, since this is an abbreviation, the sense in this context is, if there is to me, then may I be cursed. So actually, the bottom line is this. The real meaning is, there is not to me. And that's how it will be translated. There is not to me baked bread. Going on to the next phrase, kiyim, that can be rendered as only, only the fullness of a hand of flour in the jar. So the fullness of a hand, we could say only a handful of flour in the jar cod, and a little oil, so ma'at shemen, in the jug. And behold, I am, and then again we have this verb, kashash, which we saw earlier in verse 10, uh, gathering a little bit of firewood. Now actually the text says, you know, shanayim, uh, eight seem, like two pieces of wood. But here, too, shanayim uh, has the sense of a couple pieces of wood or some pieces of wood, a few pieces of wood. And then proceeding with that, verse 12. And I will go and I will make it, uh, make the supplies that she still has, make it for myself and for my son. Now the text, the Masoretic text, actually has for my son. We don't have time to get into this, but for text critical reasons, this could be amended to for my children. And in fact, that's the reading that I favor. So I'm going to continue with that as we go on in this passage. And for my children, and we will eat it, that which I have prepared, the verba call, and we will die. And so we have wow consecutive perfects there at the end, and we will die. So the point is she only has this little bit of food left. She's, she's going to prepare it. They will eat it. Then their food will be out, and then they will starve to death. Verse 13, he, and that would be, of course, Elijah, said to her. And in fact, we have Elijah then given as the subject. He said to her, Elijah, Elijah said to her, do not be afraid. So the negative all with the verb, yare, do not be afraid. Go and do from the verb asa, according to your word, or as you have spoken. Ak, only asi, make li for me from there, from your house, from your pantry. And then we have uga, and uga can be translated as loaf, and then it's modified by 
katana, a small loaf, and then ba rishona. Uh, at the first, we can simply render that first. So make for me from there a small loaf, a loaf first, and then the verb yatsa hifil, and bring it out to me, understood it, and bring it out to me, and for yourself, lock, and for your, and again I'm going to translate this as a plural, for your children, make, and then the verb asa again, make, and then ba afterward. So again, Elijah is saying, make for me from there a small loaf first, and bring it out to me, and for yourself and for your children, make afterward. You know, make something afterward. Then going on to verse 14. Because thus says Yahweh, or that it could also be rendered, because thus Yahweh has said, Yahweh the God of Israel. And then we have again the noun kad, the jar of flour will not run out, the verb kala, and the jug of oil will not lack until the day Yahweh gives rain, Geshem, on the face of the earth or the face of the land. Now going back to that form which is translated as gives, uh, we see it in the Masoretic text as taint. taint. So in other words, the tau, the sere, the tau, and the nun. Now analyzing this form, uh, perhaps there's a scribal error here. You can look in the margin to the left and see that the kare has teth. In other words, that is the usual form for the call infinitive construct of the verb nathan. And so this form that we have actually in the text, known as the kathiv, that form is odd and possibly, once again, a scribal error. Also, we can see this infinitive construct in the construct state with the following word, Yahweh. In, until the day of to give of Yahweh. That's a literal translation, but smoothing it out. Until the day Yahweh gives rain on the face of the ground. Verse 15, so she went and she did and she made according to the word of Elijah and she ate. Now this next phrase, you see what it is in the Masoretic text. The spelling would be hey, wow, Aleph, and then makaf, and then the wow conjunction and then hey, yod, Aleph. And this again, could be a matter of a scribal error. Uh, the Masoretes have pointed it in a different way, to mean, uh, to read in a different way. And again, you can look in the margin to the left and see the kare. And there, with the kare, you see rather this. You see, first of all, the he, the yod, and the aleph. And then, after the conjunction, the he, the wow, and the aleph. Reading that in the order of the Hebrew, that would be she and he. And this is supported, this reading, she and he, is supported by several Hebrew manuscripts, the Old Greek, the Syriac, and the Targum. And so that's an emendation that we can make to the Masoretic text. First of all, there's very strong manuscript support for that emendation. And then also, a good mechanical reason can be supplied for the error, a wow Yod confusion was extremely common in the history of the text, an extremely common scribal error. So again, we would read this way, and she ate, she and he, and her house, and then at the end we have simply the word yamim days. Now here in this context that designates an indefinite period of time. So our translation could be for some time. Uh, we know that Elijah stayed at the widow's house many days. 
uh, about three years. Going on from there to verse 16, our last verse. The jar of flour did not run out, and the jug of oil did not lack, according to the word of Yahweh, which he spoke, now literally, by the hand of Elijah. But that phrase, and especially in this context, designates instrumentality. So, which he spoke by means of Elijah. Well, thus far, thus far, the Hebrew text, and that's been fairly good workout. <laughs> and now just a few thoughts at the end because of our time. Uh, with this miraculous provision of food by Yahweh, uh, we're reminded of how God provided miraculously for the Israelites in the wilderness in the time of Moses, providing them with manna all those years. So we can look backward in the history of Israel, and we can also look forward because with this miracle in the time of Elijah, there is foreshadowing of miracles that would be performed by the greatest prophet, Jesus Christ. And we think of his miraculous provision of food to the crowds. So, an interesting text from the standpoint of the Hebrew, but also then from the standpoint of contents and what it contains. May God bless your working on this text and your use of it in your Bible class and in preaching. The Lord be with you.